Welcome! I'm Yuan Nielsen. And I'm Lincoln Murphy. And this is Impact Weekly. We're here to help you make your customers successful. Each week, we answer your most pressing customer success management questions by relying on our years of experience with companies around the world. Let's get this going. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's time for Impact Weekly. And we have a very timely question coming in. So as we record this starting the year 2024, the question we got is this one. Starting the year off, what are some key actions I should take for a positive beginning? So that's top of mind probably for a lot of us. And now when we're into a new year and also maybe also coming off some holiday period and some time off. But I think we all have these New Year's resolutions and so on. That's quite a gimmick. But I think it's starting the year, it's a good time to reflect. It's a good time to actually ask these type of questions. For sure. I mean, if you just take the end of the year, beginning of the new year as just, you could just say it's a random time <laughs> that it doesn't have to have any special meaning. It's a good just point in time to, to do this reflection. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on it. It doesn't have to be some crazy New Year's resolution or New Year, New Me kind of thing. It's just, it's a point in time that would allow us to do some reflection and some planning. So I think take advantage of that. I will say a lot of things do revolve around the New Year, though. Yeah. Changes that you need to be aware of, changing goals and, and measures of success and, and things like that. It's not super arbitrary. You know, there, there is no. something to be said, but if you don't have to believe anything, or you don't have to have some, this mystical time of year, it's just a, a nice point in time to gather your thoughts, reflect yeah. and start planning. And I guess if we also zoom out a little bit around the question, maybe for some of us also, we had uh, maybe it was full steam ahead, closing the year. And then we went on holiday and we've been off it for a while. And then we come back and. Maybe we're almost stressed having been off <laughs> and uh, we also need to restart our engines and get things going again. So uh, I think we should touch on that as well, how we do that. Yeah. I've seen memes that are allude to the fact that I go on vacation and I don't come back rested at all. I come back with a, 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 a revitalized hatred for my job. <laughs> Hopefully that's not you, but yes. I think there's something behind that, right? Which is. Sometimes you go on a break and hopefully you actually enjoy the break. You use it for what it is, which is a break away from, from your work. But when you come back, you might actually feel extra stressed. You might actually feel a little bit, a little bit more stressed than you would have otherwise because maybe some work piled up. Maybe that's just your personality is, okay, I, I had some downtime, but now I need to just get back into it. Or to your point, we ended the year or just the point before the break in a mad scramble to, to hit numbers or to close projects or whatever it is. And then we had the break and you want to come back and continue that momentum, continue that same amount of hustle. And that can just lead to a lot of stress. And so I think there's some things that we can do to help you not have that level of stress. And I think that's what we'll cover today. Because this can be and should be a time that allows you to, I think, reduce some of that stress and start really being able to put together a plan for the year um, yeah. in, in, in a meaningful way. No, absolutely. I think that's, I think that's really relevant for a lot of us. Uh, and I think customer success managers, we know they are, have very busy schedules. They are usually, they are over capacity and workload and especially in the end of the year for a lot of times that's a very stressful period so now that's done and now we're back and now we need to get things going again maybe find our own energy our own motivation and see okay where am i going here both as a customer success manager with my customers but also as an individual as a customer success manager doing a career here so we i think we should touch on that as well yeah, one of the things that I think can really help 
it's interesting to talk about this because if I don't, so from my own personal experience, if I don't do the things that I'm about to say, I can easily get into stress mode and feel overwhelmed. And so one of the things that is really helpful to me and to a lot of people that, that I've worked with is to have a plan and to be deliberate about what you're trying to accomplish, to understand why you are doing the things that you're doing and, and why you're going to do the things that you're going to do. We talk about this being a time to reflect. Mm. Yes, reflect on, on what you accomplished last year, which can help, by the way, with your objective confidence, which is something we talk about in Impact Academy. Being able to say, I, I deserve to be in this role. I deserve that promotion that I got, or I deserve mm. to be in this position because, or I deserve to be respected by my customers because, and you can reflect on some of the things that, that you accomplished last year to say, these are the results I got objectively. I don't even have to be, I don't have to feel good about myself. I don't have to be in a, in a really positive state of mind right now. I can just look back objectively at the year that just passed and say, I did these things. My customers had these results. This was, these were the things that I accomplished and those are just facts. And so I can now have that ready loaded up as part of my objective confidence. So when I do get into a situation where I'm not feeling super confident in this new year, because I'm human and humans, the, your confidence is going to fluctuate. You're what we call subjective confidence, right? That confidence Mm -hmm. that comes and goes with the wind. That stuff we can't really rely on. So in the moments where your subjective confidence is low, you're not feeling it this today, you mm. can look back on what you accomplished last year and say, yeah, you know what? I did good. Mm. I did. I had these results. My customer got these results. Mm. I, I do know what I'm doing. I do deserve to be here. And that can help raise up, again, just that objective confidence that's based on fact, which, by the way, will start to elevate your subjective confidence because you're going to feel better about yourself. So this is a good time to reflect on that stuff. So you have that going forward. But I think the main thing here is, is the going forward part, right? Right. We, We want to make sure that yes, we reflect and all that great, but how do we actually go forward in a way that is what I like to say is, is deliberate where we're we're really taking control of the path forward. And not just being at the mercy of whatever life throws at us, which yeah. by the way, or we're our talking inbox, about this. Right? Or inbox, exactly. Yeah. The life of a customer success professional is very often dictated by everyone else. Yes. Right. And so how can you rein that in, take more control over your day, over your week, over your role, over your position as a CSM or a head of CS? Yeah. Speaking of that, I think we, we don't know this question if it's coming from a yeah, individual contributor, a, a CSM, or if it's coming from a leader or team lead or head of customer success. So maybe we should just yeah, split that into two parts and, and look at, first of all, maybe start off with the CSM. We already started a little bit. What, uh, what's time to reflect? Before we get into actions, maybe we, we need to allow us the time to reflect and what, what are some things we can do as the customer success manager at this point in time, starting the year, basically? A number of different things that, that sort of on the, off the top of our heads, we came up with a list of about five different things. There's going to be more, and there's going to be things that are specific to your unique situation, of course. But the first one that comes to mind for me, and of course, if you've listened to our pod at all, you're, this is going to be very familiar to you, but we want to sync with our customers specifically around goal discovery. We want to make sure. So again, we could look at New Year as being just this arbitrary time, but the reality is a lot of people see it as very significant. And so a lot of companies, Mm -hmm. your customer companies, will see that as a time to change their goals, to focus Mm -hmm. on new things, to go into new markets, to bring new products to market or to start planning for those. And so... You want to make sure you sync with your customer to understand if there have been any changes to their goals. Mm-hmm. So to the objective that they're trying to accomplish, to the time frame within which that objective mm-hmm. needs to be accomplished. So just make sure there have there either haven't been any changes and we can continue forward the way we have been, or that there have been changes and we need to create a new plan. So now's a good time to sync with your customers on their goals and just make sure that you understand what those are and that 
you have the right plan going forward for them. Yeah. So yep, assess or update your uh, update that with the ones you have a goal. Maybe and some of the times we know this that sometimes you don't have this goal or you haven't discovered it or you haven't had that discussion with your customer. And it's a good time also to uh, use this timing as well as an excuse or uh, as a reason basically to reach out and t- talk with them and say, "Yeah, I'm 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 doing this with all my customers right now. It's setting the new goals for the year. I want to yes understand where you are and so on." In it's fact, also good to use this starting of the year as a reason for yeah, syncing or getting back to in the discussion with your customer on the goals. No, that's so true. And I, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, I got excited because this actually comes up a lot in our Impact Academy. When we talk about goal discovery, CSMs specifically will often ask, how do I have this conversation with my customers when, when I haven't done that before? We haven't done goal discovery before. How do I bring this up as if it's going to be something weird or the customer's going to catch on and say, wait a minute, why are we talking about this thing we've never talked about before? I understand why a CSM might be nervous to bring this up, but to your point, what a great time to bring this up and have it not be weird. Yeah. It's New Year's. We're going into the new year. Let's talk about your goals. If they say, we've never done that before, I'm uncomfortable with this, we say, New Year. New us, uh, second. Let's exactly. do it. So it's a good, it's a yeah. good reason, and I so I, I appreciate you you saying that because I think that is something that CSMs, specifically CSMs, deal with a lot, which is okay. This is going to be this is going to be a change to the way we've done things. So here's a nice, legitimate reason to have that conversation. Exactly. So definitely pick up on the goals with the sync with your customers, of course, number one thing here, but all, also for CSMs. We need to get the sync with internally as well and have a discussion and update yourself with your, if you're a CSM, with your head of customer success, your manager, and are we, um, uh, have anything happened on our side internally, what the focus is? We know a lot of custom, a lot of companies are switching from a growth mode into efficiency mode. We talked about that in previous podcasts. Is that also happening in my company? What's going on? What is the, what are in focus from my leadership? Maybe there's some new processes that we need to, we know a lot of the initiatives maybe that we planned for last year, maybe they didn't come through. So maybe we're doing some, we have focus on on improving some processes. What are those and how can I be part of that? Maybe I even have some ideas or suggestions that things we should improve that we haven't done. We we talk about this a lot in at Impact Academy. Also, we need to work with sprints usually to get things improved, and it's a great time also to maybe bring up some uh, or uh, ideas, suggestions we have that we can that we would like to implement uh, this quarter or the coming months. Yeah, I think I I love this suggestion. I just one of the things that I think is easy to do as a CSM is to wait for your head of CS to come tell you about changes. And I always advocate, we, we do this in Impact Academy all the time. We, we, we tell our CSMs to advocate for themselves, to, to take control, to be deliberate. And one of those things is to go to your head of CS and ask them about changes to our goals, our measures of success, what processes mm-hmm. need to be updated, what have priorities shifted? So to your to your point, these things are super important. And I, I think that the main thing here is as a CSM, don't just wait around for your head of customer success to come to you. Mm. You need to know what you need to be focused on, what your measures of success are, and to be proactive and, and go to your head of customer success to sync on those things. I think that that's... It's, it's it's really good to be proactive there because that's sh- I think that shows your initiative as well. And um, instead of waiting for that uh, as a manager, you will for sure appreciate that. Yeah, there's not going to be there's not going to really be much downside to to being proactive there. I can tell you that. No. All right. The next one that I think is something you could do and and should do here at the beginning of a new year is to evaluate your portfolio of customers. Mm-hmm. So. Really just look at your customers and start to categorize them as what of, of the customers that you're managing, which ones are a bad fit? 
which means they don't have success potential, yeah. right? So these are customers that no matter what you do, they're not going to be successful with us. We want to identify those. Which of your customers are on track to hit success mile, progress milestones where there is an expansion opportunity associated with them? So they're, these are customers that are likely to grow this year. Which of your customers are at risk? Which of your customers might be advocates for us? So identify those different cohorts of customers, and there's going to be overlap there with some. And especially if you have bad fit customers, probably a lot of those are going to be at risk. And then we want to, as when we sync with our head of customer success, you want to bring that uh, to the table and say, look, here's the reality of my portfolio. And, and this is where you need to advocate for yourself. These customers don't have success potential. No matter what I do with them, they're not going to be successful. Let's carve those out of my book of business or carve those out of my portfolio because they're going to bring down our numbers. And that's going to be a negotiation between you and your head of customer success. But you need to be Oh, you need to at least be aware of the reality mm. of your portfolio yeah. so that yes. you're not like you're looking at this going, some of these customers are failing and they're going to churn. Mm. At the very least, you can look at that and go, but some of that's not my fault. Now, hopefully, not only is it not your fault, but you're also not being punished or, or at least rewards are not being withheld from you because of these customers of whom you had no control in bringing them in the first place. And as a company, we shouldn't have signed them. But that's the kind of thing we want to be able to go to our leadership and say, here's what my, here's the reality of my portfolio. And then again, yes. there can be some back and forth and they can say, I think your criteria is off a little bit here and hmm. that's fine. But yeah, that's a great way to get a good read on where you're at to start the year. This is the yeah. reality of my portfolio of customers. Now, hopefully you have a, a, a CSM product that you use, a tool that you use that can give you a good snapshot of those types of things. Yeah. I don't know, like start deliver. But if you don't and you have to do that work manually, that's all that's fine as well. But that yeah. sort of analysis is really important. Yes. And with that you can be very clear about this is my this is how I see the year playing out now. If I focus on these accounts or these customers I see the potential in in NRR for my portfolio. And I think you mentioned a great word there, reality check. Like this is the status of things. I think this time of year, beginning of the year, it's really good to to bring that up and have a real yeah, a reality check on how things are. And also, this is how I would like to prioritize my portfolio. Based on reality, this is how it looks. These are bad fit. These are low. They have lack success potential. I believe I could spend my time more valuably here. And do we do the right things with these customers? I think they can, we can grow my portfolio with X percent or whatever it is. So have that type of discussion. Okay. That's going to, that's going to help you a lot as well with your manager and management. Absolutely. I think also here, another part of, I think. We talked about efficiency. I think we all are in the customer success is about efficiency. And speaking of reflections, I think we should look also maybe last couple of months or a quarter. What, how, what type of meetings did I do? What, what, what meetings did I have? How much time did I spend on meetings? And what can be, what can be improved in, in, in terms of number of meetings, type of meetings, and what can be async, what can be, what actually move the needles, move the needle with my customers and do a review of your, what, where you spend your time, basically. And it's usually meetings one way or the other. And we know our experience here is that there is a lot of room for improvement here. Not that you should remove meetings, but you should have meetings that really have real impact. And, and that usually takes more, more preparations it takes also more uh, follow-ups and follow-through after the meetings. And then you have some meetings that you can actually remove or reduce or, or move away to other type of uh, formats, basically. Yeah. And I mean, we've talked about this in, in other episodes, but I want to just reiterate the reason we're talking about meetings as something to really focus on here. The reason we talk about meetings so often is we're talking about one-on-one -on -one meetings between you and your customer, or it could be you and multiple people on your customer side. These are synchronous meetings. You're not being able to do anything else at, the, at that time, which means this is probably the most expensive thing that you do in terms of time, 
in terms of if we were actually breaking down the cost of your time, like a, a one hour meeting with your customer is the most expensive thing that, that you do. Yeah. And so we need to figure out ways of making those things as efficient as possible. And to your point, we may not be able to eliminate meetings. It's very likely for at least a cohort of your customers that their appropriate experience is built around one-on-one -on -one meetings. So you're not ever going to be able to eliminate them completely. You may not even be able to cut down on the number of meetings that you have with some of those customers. But can you make those meetings more efficient? Can you make them more, more impactful by doing by offloading some of the things that you would do one-on-one -on -one to async channels or deflecting to self-service, thus making the meeting itself more, more effective and more impactful by just focusing on the things that you have to do one-on-one? -on -one. So there's, by taking a look at your meetings and like you said, you know, going back and looking at the last couple of months and just looking at all the meetings that you had and figuring out which ones could be eliminated, could be made more efficient. I think you're going to be in a better place going forward because, again, these are the things that can really, having too many meetings can burn you out. Having meetings mm -hmm. that are not effective can teach your customers to not come to your meetings. This is, this is the kind of stuff that can really impact you in your role, but also impact your results if your meetings are not as effective as they could be. So this is a great opportunity to, to dig into that. And that's, should we move on to head of customer success as well? And mention a few things. I think all these, all of the above we talked about, of course, relevant for heads of customer success as well as you can do these things for your team or with your team. But maybe there's some things also to mention around what a head of customer success can do this time of the year or, or, or when reflecting. And maybe it's a start off with, I think, similar to you as a CSM wanting to check in with your manager as head of customer success, of course, you want to sync with your executives, also have a clear discussion on the, on the, on things that have happened or are in focus, the strategy, what are the targets for the year, where are we, what's the game plan, and be really in sync there also with your management team and your executives, of course. So probably also what kind of budget or resources you have to work with, where you should put your focus and the team's focus for the year. That's number one, I would say, as head of CS as well. Yeah, and so you know, we talked about CSMs being proactive and going to the head of customer success. Head of customer success should be proactive and, and go to their executive leadership. And yeah. again, the same for the same reason. As you just mm. said, things change. And then they need a good head of customer success will then quickly sync with the team, maybe even before the CSMs come to them. This is something that that probably should should have been started last year. <laughs> Either if you didn't do that, now's a now's a good time to do that. So I think just make, honestly, so much of this comes down to communication, just making yeah. sure we're all on the same page. But one thing that is also just really important is we want to make sure customer success is moving in the same direction as the company. And maybe that sounds so obvious, but sometimes customer success management has internal measures of success that are just out of sync with the company's measure of success. And you'll see this very, very glaring example of this is where, and, and, and thankfully this doesn't happen too often anymore, but you'll see a, a a customer success management organization, the head of customer success will have put a measure of success in that's NPS or CSAT or something like that, some sort of customer satisfaction mm -hmm. thing. And I'm not saying those are bad, but that's probably not your, you probably shouldn't be your main KPI. And the company's measure of success is net revenue retention. Yeah. Okay. So you have CS that has this CSAT score as its measure of success and the company has NRR and they're just out, out of sync. As head of customer success, what you're going to be presenting to your leadership in terms of that CSAT score mm -hmm. doesn't in any way roll up to the KPI that they're looking at. And at the very least, you're just going to be doing something that's devaluing customer success because they're not going to see how it actually impacts the company. They're going to see you focused on a soft metric like, like satisfaction. So you just want to make sure it's like if NRR is the is the measure of success for the company, NRR should be the measure of success for customer success. An input into overall customer health and things like that can be customer satisfaction. You have to eliminate that completely, but the main KPI needs to sync up 
with the company. And, and as we talked about, maybe that KPI now is not NRR. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's an efficiency metric, like revenue per employee or something, yeah. whatever. So to make sure that if that is the new measure of success for the company, that is now the measure of success in customer success. Okay, yes. that's that becomes the KPI that we're looking at there. So I think that's really important. And then just once you've synced up, making sure that you communicate that down to your team as quickly as possible, I think is critical. Definitely. I think because when you know that, because when you know where the focus is and also when you know maybe also what funds we have to play with or to work with, that's also when you can do the next part, which is capacity planning and starting your, making your plan. What, how can I, okay, this is the NRR target or the goal or what we're looking to do. How do I make a plan around that? And that's, uh, that comes down to, so you need to start there, of course, to, to make a realistic plan. And we talk a lot about capacity planning at the Impact Academy because it's not just to split the ARR over across your team. It's more, you need to work it through in more detail. For sure. Regardless of, of how you segment your customers, whether it's the legacy ARR based segmentation, the old school customer success based on how much they pay us, or you do something more modern, segmenting your customers by shared appropriate experience. However you do that, you want to make sure you understand how many person hours are required to deliver your customers appropriate experience across the different life cycle stages. Mm -hmm. So it varies across different life cycle stages. There's going to be different levels of interaction and onboarding versus adoption versus ongoing engagement versus even things like expansion or renewal. And so we need to know how many person hours from our CSMs, but also any other individual contributors are required to deliver that appropriate experience and also deliver the customer's goal, right? So they're trying to achieve their goal and they're trying to do it in a way that's appropriate. Bring that together, that's their desired outcome. You need to get clear on that. And then once you understand that, then you can look at your resources available and say, gosh, based on what we come up with in terms of required capacity versus the resources we have, our CSMs are at 400% capacity. (laughs) <laughs> They're working with four times as many customers as they should be. So we have a resource issue or, and this is much more rare, gosh, our CSMs could take on 10 times more customers and be just fine. That's probably not the case, but you need to do that work. Yeah. And it's a process, but once you do it, then you just continue to refine it and evolve it over time. But it's super important to understand, again, we've talked about this in multiple ways, the reality on the ground. You need a reality check. Starting the new year is as, as good time as any to, to get that reality check and to figure out what your true capacity looks like right now and also to start planning. So if I know that this is where we're at right now and I also know that sales and marketing are going to be ramping customer acquisition in Q2, then I can start figuring out how many CSMs or onboarding specialists or other individual contributors I'm going to need when that sales ramps. Because Mm. the sales will go up maybe in that quarter Mm. and maybe sales die down after that, but I still have all those new customers that I have to work with. I have to send them, get them through onboarding, and then we're going to continue to work with them for hopefully the next few years. So I need to know what that capacity, what's required to work with those new customers. So capacity plan yeah. is really important. We go into a lot of detail on exactly how to do it in Impact Academy, but regardless of how you do it, you need to figure that out. Yeah. Um, when you've done that part, you can look at the, the team, of course, and you can look at what skills and competence do I need to uh, fit to, to the plan. And I think that's also some reflection that you can do now is to see, okay, Maybe I have a new, a few new hires. Maybe I have a few people that's looking for the next step. And that's another part to uh, reflection is, okay, what's the next step for the team? And how do I plan for the team to take these next steps and, and develop their professional skills and competence? Uh, and I think that's both on me as a CSM, I can do that reflection myself, but also definitely as a head of CS to really spend some time because that's going to that's gonna help them build competence, but it's also going to help them build motivation to see everybody is looking to improve and, and, and see progress in their career. And that's my job as a leader, uh, also as an individual to, to plan for that. And this is also a good time to do that. 
And uh, this fits, of course, great to uh, our Impact Academy as well, where we have different programs around different competences and skills that you will need across the different life cycle stages and the different processes that you run as head of customer success. So make sure to check out the, the programs as well, because that could fit very well into your planning as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So for customer success specific stuff, Impact Academy, there's also general training on, on things like conflict resolution or yeah. project management, things like that. And then there's also domain specific training for your team, mm -hmm. things that are very specific to what your product does, what your customers do, that kind of thing. And so it's a mix of those. Obviously, if it's customer success specific, Impact Academy is where you should go, in my humble opinion. But it's of all of those things. And looking at the CSMs holistically and, and knowing what all is required for them to most effectively help the customers is part of your job as a head of customer success. And taking the time and being deliberate with that is really important. And of course, I hear from heads of customer success, if I train my team and they leave, if I train mm -hmm. a CSM and then they leave, I just wasted money on that or I wasted you know resources on that. And, and I, I say as the, the old adage is, yeah, if you train them and they leave, but what if you don't train them and they stay? Now you have CSMs that have outdated knowledge. Yeah. And like, makes no sense. If you have employees, you should probably want them to be the best at what they do and make sure that you're, 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 and again, if you're a CSM or an individual contributor, this is also something you should be doing on your own or syncing with your head mm -hmm. of customer success on to say, look, as part of my career, I need this additional, this additional training because I want to be the best that I can be in my role and take control of that. Be deliberate in your professional development training for your team and also for yourself. Definitely. All right. So let's try to wrap this up in our three main takeaways. Um, so just to create the question, starting the year off, what are some key actions I should take for a positive beginning? And I'll start there. And I think the number one thing here we want to pass on is that Allow this time to reflect. Don't stress into things. It'll take some time to really reflect, basically. That's number one. Number two is reassess your goals and also your customers' goals. This is a great time to do that. And the last one here is that when you've done those things, you can be really deliberate with your actions and actions will build into momentum. So Wait with actions, but to, to do number one and two first and then start the actions and then you will get back into it and have a really good year. So those are our three takeaways. Thanks, everyone, and see you back soon. Hey, thanks for listening. Do you want to bring your customer success to the next level? Check out Impact Academy. We have training programs for customer success managers and for leaders in customer success. Thank you.